News 10 at 6 starts right now. Breaking news, first alert weather, and live local coverage. This is News 10 at 6. Good evening. The Kringle Holiday Market at Rudder Park in Lansing welcomes everyone. It even has tiny sheds that keep you warm. Three different groups permitted to help the homeless say these sheds should be used to help those in need. News 10's Tania Jordan has the report. Tiny sheds are being used at Rudder Park in Lansing for the Kringle Holiday Market. Advocates for Lansing's homeless population say the sheds could be used to keep people warm, but the city of Lansing says they're not built for people to live in. We have opportunities for appropriate housing. We even have a team that is an outreach team that visits people, whether they're in parks or under overpasses, to talk about appropriate and safe um, housing. Advocates say the number of homelessness hasn't decreased, even with available resources. The City Rescue Mission reported uh, from October to October, we're up 70% homelessness from last year. I think that we need to have a discussion. We need to talk about opening up more shelters, a warming center. If people can't go out and set around the heaters that are probably taxpayer paid, funded, then we need to find an alternative. These sheds were set up in Ruder Park to keep people who visit the Kringle Market warm. But when business hours are over, people who sleep here have to find their own way to keep warm. Punks with Lunch says they'd like the city to repurpose the shelters after the market ends, giving people a place to get out of the cold and snow. Those shacks that are built are there specifically to shelter people from the elements, from the wind and the cold and the ice. And then there are people here in the park, even at this very moment, who are huddled over manhole covers coming up from the city to huddle around just to stay warm. What we need to do is we need to sit down as a community and we need to discuss this. If we're allowed to have tiny buildings, then let's make tiny buildings for our homeless. There's abandoned lots, there's old schools. In Lansing, Tania Jordan, News 10. Homeless advocates we talked to say they want to sit down with the city of Lansing, as you heard there, to talk about potentially keeping those tiny sheds around once the holiday market is over. Taking a live look from our Michigan State University Skycam in East Lansing. A lot of students heading out of town for the Thanksgiving holiday. Andy Provenzano in the Weather Center with our first look at the forecast for those getting a head start on Thanksgiving week travel. Hi, Andy. And David, good luck to them for the getting the extra days off. That's good. <laughs> but it's no problems traveling. Our only concerns are going to be in the morning hours, the next couple of mornings, with some fog issues, and that will eventually get be better as the afternoon wears on. But uh, careful if you're traveling first thing in the morning next to uh, two days. If you take a look at the Capital City SkyCam, the Meridian Company SkyCam Network, it's all clear. Not a bad day. A lot of sunshine really helped us out a lot today. We started this morning in the lower 20s, but we're going to go back there tonight. So it will be a cold night, but it's got back to the low 40s in some locations, even mid 40s. Still shy of normal, but we're getting closer and closer. And even all the way up to the bridge, all those areas that have about two feet of snow on the ground still got in the 30s. And that's one of the problems is we melted some of that snow, so we expect to find some fog first thing in the morning. There's warmer and warmer air trying to get here. It's going to be a battle though, between the morning fog and afternoon sun sunshine to try to heat us up. So hour by hour, the cloud cover will filter in from the north and the fog will form across mid Michigan. So we'll wake up to some of that even more on Wednesday morning. And we'll tell you what that means in just a few minutes. All right, Andy, thank you. Taking a live look at our sky cam over I-496 in Lansing. Right now, there's no traffic on the highway, as you can see, but we do have some good news for drivers tonight. The two mile stretch from Lansing Road to Grand River will reopen to traffic just in time for Thanksgiving. The Michigan Department of Transportation will be opening both east and westbound lanes of traffic tomorrow. News 10's Claudia Sella is live there right now. Claudia. David, for the past five months, this stretch of I-496 has been closed for a rebuilding project. And if you take a look over this bridge, you can see that there's not a car in sight, but that will all change tomorrow. The massive project repaired multiple structures, including sewage, draining and lighting. The freeway will open tomorrow, but if you're looking to use any of the exits like Walnut, Pine, MLK or Washington, you'll have to wait just a few more weeks. We're going to get those open as soon as we can. We're just working on getting uh, the light poles up on those. And so as, as we get the light poles up on each of those, we'll get them open. 
MDOT expects to have those exits opened in mid-December. We will let you know when that happens. And MDOT says they hope that these reopenings make your holiday travels a little less stressful. Live in Lansing, Claudia Sella, News 10. All right, Claudia, thank you. The closures were part of an $80 million investment to rebuild the freeway and interchange ramps. The entire project expected to be complete in fall 2023. Here's one you don't hear every day. Sheriff's deputies recovered a stolen car from their own parking lot. This all unfolded at around 3.30 Sunday afternoon. The Jackson County Sheriff's Office says one of its deputies recognized the stolen car. Once it was confirmed, the alleged thief was found sitting right in the Sheriff's Office lobby. Deputies arrested the 59-year-old man who they say was carrying 27 grams of methamphetamine. He's charged with receiving and concealing a stolen vehicle and possession of meth. $2.4 million will help bring more affordable housing to the Lansing area. The money comes from the Department of Environment, Great Lakes and Energy's Brownfield Grant Program. This program funds 67 projects throughout the state of Michigan. $1 million of that funding will be used to build senior and multifamily housing in the Stadium District in downtown Lansing. Grant money will be used to clean up contaminated properties, which includes tearing down buildings and installing ground ventilation systems. For the first time since she took office, Governor Gretchen Whitmer has parted, pardoned a turkey for the Thanksgiving holiday. Take a look. Here is the Mitch ceremony e. where a turkey a named turkey the Mitch E. Gander got the official pardon. The name came from a contest where people in Michigan could come up with a name for the lucky bird. More than 6,000 names were turned in. Some of the rummer ups were Tequamanon Tom, Automobile, and Steve Theiserman. And it's a great opportunity to highlight a great organization that rescues animals um, locally here, but we've got a number of organizations across the state. And just think it was a, a kind of a, a lighthearted way to show thanks and to bring kids over and to have a little bit of fun. Earlier today, President Joe Biden pardoned two turkeys whose names are Chocolate and Chip. As the holiday approaches, Michigan State Police want to make sure families have access to a good feast on Thanksgiving. Through a partnership with Kroger, the department will be handing out meals to 200 families in Central and Southeast Michigan. Families are selected through agencies such as the Department of Health and Human Services and local food banks. Each meal will feed a family of four to six and includes a turkey and the traditional sides. A state police lieutenant tells us how important this initiative is. There are a lot of families out there that don't have the funds to, uh, to have a, a meal every day. And for a large meal for Thanksgiving, that, that could be a complete, uh, that they're not going to get that at all. Meals will be distributed to families starting tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning. A much warmer day at Fitzgerald Memorial Park in Grand Ledge. Will that trend continue? Andy's back to map out a Thanksgiving week warm up in his first alert forecast. Plus, the bells are ringing. Find out how you can help the Lansing Area Salvation Army this holiday season. Here's a live look at first alert traffic. Things looking pretty good as the evening commute winds down on this Monday. We'll let you know if anything pops up. And this year, News 10 is supporting the U.S. Marine Corps Reserves and the Salvation Army to help make sure no child goes without presents this holiday season. Now through December 10th, you can drop off new and unwrapped toys to the News 10 studios on American Road in Lansing or at any of the locations you see right there on your screen. Thank you for helping us make an impact. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Jim. It's one of the busiest times of the year for shopping and raising money. The Capital Area Salvation Army has started ringing its bells for the holiday season, but needs your help. They're looking for volunteers to help ring bells across locations in Clinton, Eaton, and Ingham counties. Volunteers will be able to sign up for a shift at any location. Besides needing people to ring the bells, the Salvation Army is asking the mid-Michigan community to help meet its Red Kettle Campaign fundraising goal of $950,000. It's an awful lot, but we have a caring community that uh, wants to make certain that everybody here who's in need is able to be assisted. Money raised from the Red Kettle Campaign will help the Salvation Army continue to provide services such as rental assistance, utilities, and food. To volunteer as a bell ringer, head to our website, wilx.com. 
Well, for bell ringers and anyone else working outside this week, the weather is much better than last week. It certainly is, and good for Thanksgiving travel this week, yeah, too. I just think it was the last week if everybody had to travel on Thursday and Friday. Yeah, certainly. <laughs> Although there's some communities in Buffalo that can't travel anywhere still because True. of the snow. But True. No, it's really good. I have some fog issues the next couple of mornings okay. may slow you up a touch. But in other words, uh, pretty good. There's nationwide. We'll show you the whole thing. First, okay. start you off with the satellite picture and radar. The only rainy showers. There's a low pressure that's sitting in the Gulf uh, just offshore, and that's creating some rain from Austin down to Houston on over to New Orleans, and then you go off in southern parts of Florida. Otherwise, not a whole lot. If you're traveling tomorrow, there's a system I'll show you in a few minutes out in the uh, Pacific Northwest that I think is the only spot the airlines could say weather delays. Otherwise, it's pretty good. Hour by hour, there comes some fog. That's an issue. We're melting snow. Don't have the wind anymore. The winds will be light tonight, and we'll have some low clouds, some light fog. Any fog that we do see, be aware, we're going to go below freezing, down to 20 degrees. So that stuff sticks to things, and that's not a real thick area of ice, but a little glaze here and there may greet us first thing in the morning. All of that, I think, will move northward, and we can get rid of that. It's tough not having a lot of sunshine, not high in the sky to burn off fog like you do most of the year, but we kind of on the edges can erode it a little bit. It might take till noon across the Lansing area and northward. The sunshine will help us in southern sections get to the 40s and then be in the upper 30s to the north. On Wednesday morning, the same thing. I think northern parts of mid-Michigan will have a real tough time of seeing any kind of decent sunshine. But if you're traveling on Wednesday anywhere in the state, there is no low pressure system. It's just all this moisture left over, all from all that snow and the changing of the air mass. So that's all you got. On Thursday, there will be some showers moving in late in the day. So if you're traveling locally, that's all you will run into. Temperatures, again, will be well into the 40s. So what about the visibilities? They're fine now, but you see how right towards sun rise, we start to reduce those visibilities. We'll actually go all the way down to zero. Probably not, but certainly you have to be affected by some of that travel. We go and get rid of that. Now on Wednesday, it's going to be a little tougher. You see how the fog forms here in the morning and then kind of expands and wants to kind of reform with some of that low cloudiness. It's, so the fog is not a driving issue all day long, but the low clouds will keep the heating away, that's for sure. Here's your hour by hour across the nation. I don't see any bad trouble spots. A few showers in Florida, but they see that all the time. This is the next system that we deal with on the weekend, but it will affect travel off to the west coast and then eventually towards Denver. Denver. That's about it. It's a very weak system when it does go that way. Hour by hour, by hour temperatures for us. You see the numbers in around the teens to the low 20s, and then they have a tough time warming till late afternoon. Southern sections can get there. Northern sections will be above freezing, just not back to normal. Wednesday, if you're socked in with the clouds, you're going to miss out on a good day because the southern sections flirt with 50 degrees in the sunshine. A little tougher off to the north. And here, Tricky Day Planner, it's not too bad if you're traveling locally here. Morning hours starts with hints of sunshine. Then we'll see cloudy skies. Showers should be in by the dinner hour. Temperatures will be in the 40s, so no slipping and sliding, that's for sure, even if you're leaving somewhere late. Low temperature night hits 20. We get that little patchy freezing fog. I think by noon, some areas will have burned some of that off. Others may still have a lot of clouds, and we'll go back into temperatures in the upper 30s, a little warmer off to the south. Same thing goes and holds true for Wednesday. Thursday, some showers late into parts of that chopping day. And then there's another system late Saturday into Sunday. It looks to be mainly rain, but could mix with snowflakes overnight. Not a big one. We'll keep an eye on that one, too. Yeah. Nice to see those warmer temperatures, though. It is. Everything doesn't, nothing freezes when it's, uh, you know, those kind of numbers. So yeah. travel should be good. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Andy, thank you. It's been shut down for months. Tomorrow, traffic will begin flowing again on I-496 in Lansing. We have reaction from people who have been waiting for this day to come and where MDOT stands on the massive reconstruction project. That is coming up tonight on News 10 at 11. Michigan State football coach Mel Tucker hoping for a final upset this Saturday to finish a disappointing season. Tim has details next in sports. W Live from the News 10 MSU Federal Credit Union Sports Desk. Good evening. One final regular season game for Michigan State's beleaguered football team and the Spartans are 16-point underdogs at Penn State this Saturday. Kickoff 4 p.m. on Fox Sports 1. Indiana had lost 38 straight games when trailing by 17 points, but the Hoosiers twice came back from that deficit to stun the Spartans in frigid East Lansing Saturday, ending MSU's two-game winning streak and setting up a losing record with a loss in the final game. Spartan coach Mel Tucker asked today how he can get his players ready for the final game. 
like I told the team, like once we've gone over the corrections and we've looked at them, we've owned it, then have to move on. But that starts with me. If I can't move forward and take the next right step, then the team won't, it will not. It's not like I haven't been through this before. And again, like I tell the players, I've never like been anywhere where you weren't expected to win every game. You know, that's the profession that I'm in, and so that's, that's what I do for a living. So certainly I have to be able to handle these situations, the good and the bad. Can we all agree the Spartans need more players like former running back Lorenzo White, who was here in town this past Saturday and honored during a timeout on the field. Lorenzo was being installed in the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame for his performance New Year's Day 1988, when he led the Spartans to a 20-17 win over Southern Cal. It means a lot. I mean, it means a lot to the guys that helped me, you know, my teammates to to be able to receive this award. Without them, it wouldn't be possible. I was a big goal setter when I was here at Michigan State. So just one more accolade, you know, um, but I'm thankful for it. But, of course, the big one Saturday, high noon in Columbus, Michigan versus Ohio State. They're both 11-0, first time since 2006. They're ranked 2-3 and three in the country. And will Michigan's fans be happy late Saturday after a second straight win over the Buckeyes? Plenty of smiles in Ann Arbor this season, but Michigan is a touchdown underdog for this one. Michigan coach Jim Harbaugh, not much to say today when asked about his season-long preparation for Ohio State. Uh, keeping track of them, there's things we do in practice uh, to prepare for them. Uh, you know, we know Ohio State's our toughest, toughest competition. Uh, this will be our toughest test to date. I guess that says it all. Time now for our Alro Medals Outlet High School Football Play of the Week. And tonight we highlight a moment from Saturday's Division I semifinal playoff game between Jackson, Lumen Christie, and Napoleon. Lumen Christie quarterback Joe Lathers will hurdle a defender for a touchdown in Lumen's 20-7 win, the only loss for Napoleon this season. Lumen is now 10-3, 10 straight wins, will face unbeaten Traverse City St. Francis, 10 a.m. Saturday at Detroit's Ford Field for the Division Seven state title. In week Week two, St. Francis won at Lumen 42-35, so Lumen has revenge on its mind. High School Play of the Week is sponsored by Al Rowe Metals Outlet. Onward, Michigan State's men's basketball team has a 3-1 and record, and the Spartans are ranked 12th in this week's Associated Press poll released earlier today. Spartan guard Jaden Aikens injured his surgically repaired ankle against Villanova last Friday, but Spartan coach Tom Izzo says it's not serious, hopes that he can play Thursday night in Portland, Oregon against Alabama to begin a three games in four days uh, Thanksgiving holiday tournament. Tom saying today the tournament field is rugged to say the least. Either way, win or lose the first one, we're going to have our hands full with the second one. And then you could have your hands full with another Villanova or it could be a Carolina. So the tournament is, uh, is second to none with the teams that are in it. Hey, area girls high school basketball teams open their seasons one week from tomorrow. That's one week ahead of the boys teams. At Lansing Catholic, nine-year girls coach Casey Reed begins her ninth season. She had a terrific team a year ago. Expects more of the same this winter. Why? Because Catholic had a 19-3 record for the girls last season, and four of the starters are returning. We are so excited. These girls have put in a lot of time in the off season, and um, I feel like we have a little bit more of a, a business type attitude this year, which is which is really nice to see as a coach. They definitely have been working on some chemistry for the last two years now, and experience and chemistry always pay off. We have a lot to work on still, but but it definitely helps. All right, there you go. Michigan State men's basketball, February 4th. The game at Rutgers will be played at New York's Madison Square Garden. Mm, so they'll right. get a big arena. Yeah, of course, they're playing Thanksgiving night. About 9.30, they'll play Alabama in the tournament in Portland. Fred's got a lot more tonight at 11.20, and there you go. All right, Tim, thank you. You're we'll welcome. be right back. Not a bad Monday evening weather-wise. Yeah, no snow, not as cold. Nope, no, it's, 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 no, it's <laughs> not as cold either. That's also very nice. And next to seven to ten days, really not bad temperature-wise. We're in the ballpark of being near normal. So fog issues Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday. We go into Thursday with showers late, a few on Friday and over the weekend and next week. And as far as the long range, to finish out the month, we stay above average. I think in the first week of December, the cold weather's coming back in oh. with a couple of systems. So at least we can make it through the rest of this month. Check the forecast. Tim wanted me to check the forecast down 
in Columbus. It will be in the low 50s with a few showers, and then wow. College Station should be in the mid 40s with a few showers. Okay, for the Penn State for game? For both of the yeah. games. Yeah. All right, good. Thank you. And that wraps up News 10 at 6 on this Monday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here at 11. Have a good evening.